Good morning. Welcome to C3. And uh, we'll give some time for some people to join us and uh, pop in on here. C3, uh, every Tuesday from 9 to 10 o'clock, um, we, uh, we have this Bible study. Basically, it's C3 stands for Coffee, Christ, and Conversation. And so those of you that have been joining us over the last week, you know about that. But others of you that might be joining us during the week, you kind of stumble on this and go, what in the world is a C3? So that's what C3 stands for. Coffee, Christ, and Conversation. And basically what we do is unpack the sermon on Sunday morning. So for those of you that heard the message, go ahead and get your outline out, your sermon notes. And it um, gives you a chance to interact, have any questions about the sermon, um, any thoughts. We will have, uh, we'll be able to read your comments, questions, remarks. Um, go ahead and, because uh, it's interactive, because we want to hear from you. And uh, we'll read them from time to time in our, um, you know, throughout the time here. Just let me say, I was just thinking uh, <clears throat> this morning, I missed my small group. We have a unique group that meets together, that has met together before the coronavirus, and I'm trusting in the future that we'll be able to reconnect once again. Um, this is kind of kind of different doing church like this. But today we have some, we have, uh, I want to I say our guests, but it's really family that's here today. Uh, three generation of family. Of mothers. Mothers, yeah, of mothers, because our sermon was on Mother's Day. So we'll, um, we'll have everyone introduce themselves from the youngest to the seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Allie. I am Angelia's oldest daughter. Um, I have a one-year-old. Um, he keeps me on my toes. <laughs> um, and right now, uh, me and my husband live in um, Evansville, Indiana. And, and they were, uh, they're, they're in between positions. They are uh, music directors at a church there in Indiana, and now they are in transition to become a music director in, um, uh, in some other churches. So they're in transition right now. Yeah. And I'm Angelia, his wife, her mother, and her daughter. <laughs> and I'm Nana and Mom. <laughs> there you go. So I've asked them to join us today. And you know, we're talking about Mother's Day. Got to have some moms on the panel. Um, yeah. So uh, they, they said I could stick around. So anyhow, here we are today. And um, the sermon is based on, on a survey that I came across um, that was taken last year. Uh, a na um, I don't know if it was a national survey, but it was of Christian moms. And they asked different questions about the challenges of motherhood. And out of that, um, some questions came up and the sermon was based on some of the top answers, some of the top needs that mothers uh, found themselves needing. And that's what the title of the message is, What Moms Need and How You Can Help. How can we help moms and how can we lighten their load and be, be a support to them. So basically the sermon was wrapped around a, a, a survey that was, that was taken and so Get your outline out, and, and, and the fill in the blanks were actually the answers from the survey. And so what we did was just put put uh, put uh, scripture to it. So uh, let me just kind of start, and let me just start out first of all by asking this: Do you have a favorite memory of your mother? Do you have a favorite memory? Oh, Terry of Moore says it's mother? hard to hear you, so we got to speak up. Okay, got to put my preacher's voice on. Okay. Or Terry, I know you're wearing hearing aids, so crank it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a favorite memory of our mother. Yeah. Okay. One of my favorite memories of my mom is that she, I was so blessed that she was a stay-at-home mom. So she was able to be the homeroom mom, and she was able to go to all the field trips and things like that. And one year we went to SeaWorld. We lived in Florida, so we got fun field trips. We went to SeaWorld, learned about all the animals. And there was one little girl who didn't have any money for a, uh, anything at the gift shop. And my mom uh, took some of her own money and made sure that that little girl bought, uh, got something from the gift shop. And that girl remembered all the way through my senior year of high school how kind my mother was. Uh, and is my mom is very very giving so that's a really great memory she's taught me how to give 
Very good. Let me just say welcome, Sue. Welcome, Nikki. Welcome, Bonnie, Terry, Kathy, Diane, Bonnie. We, th we welcome you. People are joining on. So if you have a favorite memory that you have of your mom, go ahead and share that, and we'll read it off the uh, off the off our cell phone there. Yeah. Favorite memory? Oh, my uh, memory of my mom was that she liked to have a house full of people. She was always cooking, she was always loving, a giver too, but that's what I remember, just a whole bunch of fellowship in my mom's house. Yeah, she did love to have a lot of people in her house. Uh, my favorite memory of my mom. Um, we, you want her to leave? <laughs> just speak up. We, um, speak up, yeah. <laughs> for my wedding, um, I had found this picture of this beautiful cake and it was like 10 layers tall and I showed it to her and I said, Mama, this is the wedding cake that I want. I think we can do this. And uh, we do crazy crafts and, you know, we're always, we're always doing something. And she said, okay. So we went to the store and made my wedding cake out of styrofoam, <laughs> styrofoam. And we painted the cake all the way up and it was seven layers tall. So that was uh, one afternoon that we got to do that in our living room. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah, but we didn't serve styrofoam, we served <laughs> cupcakes. <laughs> we have Mary Ong, Carrie Keaton. Carrie, good to, see, good to see you, it's been years. And Mary Ann says uh, her mom always brought in the homeless and would feed them a meal. And Tori said my favorite memory with my stepmom was going to the Space Museum when I was little. Just the two of us. Well, look at that. And Tori is Russ's oldest yep. daughter and uh, my oldest stepdaughter, and I'm looking forward to lunch this week with Tori, just me and her, that's what she said. And we invited Tori, but she has her hands full with three little Ooh, ones this morning. She does, she's so, got lots of babies at her da house. And David went to work, so uh, she's joining us by phone there. My favorite my, memory of my mother, she was a stay-at-home mom back in the day. Mom's, <laughs> well, we're out in my neighborhood, mom's just, uh, they worked at the house. Dad went out and worked, and mom's, stayed home and um but she did a lot of work around the house and she was always seemed like in the kitchen my mother was a good a great cook a great baker in fact um, i've gotten some of her recipes and we have and they have enjoyed some of her meals especially the baking part in fact um, i have enough buttermilk left for her um, for our chocolate cake from scratch so that's coming up probably make that today so uh but anyhow my favorite memory one of my favorites is my mother's cooking, and Sue, she's a very good cook. <clears throat> Sue said that her mom held Bible club in her yard for all the neighborhood kids so they could hear the gospel. Sue, good. I think that's coming again with this coronavirus. I think we <laughs> need to start it up. I keep telling Russ, get me a box truck, and we're taking Duke and Friends and Pastor Travis and Miss Stephanie on the road in these neighborhoods in Bonita Springs. Now, on your outline, if you have your outline, you can download that if you, can, uh, if you, if you don't have it. Um, this survey, um, we picked out eight different um, top answers that came out from Christians, from Christian moms, what moms needed, what moms needed, uh, there's some of their challenges and how we can help. And let me just read the eight different uh, uh, points that we came, that they came out of this. And there's more, but uh, <clears throat> we just did eight. The top one was moms need patience. Number two, moms need appreciation. Number three, moms need a life. Number four, moms need wisdom. Now that a survey, we need wisdom, a lot of challenges. Number five, moms need validation. Number six, moms need communication. Number seven, moms need rest. Everybody said amen there. Amen. We have a cat, so our cat's <laughs> running around here. Um, uh, and and uh, let me go on. And number uh, eight, moms need faith. So these were the top uh, answers, and we kind of wrapped the message around that and put some scripture to it. And I know this is not all of what moms need. It'd be interesting, based our conversation based on this, but maybe there's some other needs that maybe we didn't go over here that, that's top on your list. You know, that at this season, I think life is like seasons. Yeah. It's like, you know, Juana, you're in, you're in, the, you're in the Nana season, <laughs> you know, she don't have a, a two year old running around or a one, you know, running around her legs. 
but your season's different. Mm -hmm. And now you can add support to the younger mothers coming up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Allie, you're just getting into it. You're, you're <laughs> in, you, you jumped off the cliff. Here we go, motherhood. <laughs> and now Angie and I, we, we, uh, we uh, had a total of what? Five, right? Yeah. Yeah, five kids total. We have a blended family. And uh, uh, Dixie's the last one. She turned 18. So hey, in the next year or two, this this house here is going to be empty, you know. And so, um, and we are filming today. We're we're doing this from our our house here. What you see here is uh, our house. We live in a 1910 historical home. So this is a little corner of it that that we the are. The cat is. I'm sorry to disrupt, but the cat is attacking my ankle. So I either <laughs> yeah. need to, and I'm trying to really be patient about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. So, and we got Scooter the dog just looking patiently over here wanting to come over. Yeah. But anyhow, here, here's what we got. And so let me just throw this out to you. Out of, out of all of these eight different things, is there anything in the season of your life right now that you find that, um, um, that, that, that that's kind of where you're at? I mean, do you need more patience? Do you, need, do you feel like you're not as appreciative? Are you feeling like, man, I need to get a life? You know, this is like caving in on me. Um, yeah, I need some wisdom, you know, um, I need some validation. It feels like I'm all by myself and nobody knows. It seems like I'm doing all the work and, or, you know, I don't get any, any feedback, need communication. Anybody listening to you? You know, anybody hearing me? Uh, yeah, I need some rest or I need, I need my faith in God just kind of be bumped up or it's something. I think you know. it depends on the day and depends on the moment. Sometimes in the morning I, I need appreciation and sometimes <laughs> at, at night I need communication. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I say, Russ, are you listening to me? He goes, I hear you. <laughs> right? Uh, Elijah said, Hudson says his favorite memory with his mom is sword fighting. He's okay. the one-year-old. <laughs> yeah, Hudson. He put that there, Hudson. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I think that that's the thing. You know, uh, it just depends on the moment. Yeah. You know, and uh, and as a mom, we need something different from our husbands than we do from our children. Yeah. Because even even though I'm not your mom, I still need that validation as a mom from you. Yeah. You know, and and from different things like that. What do you guys think? I think it's, uh, in my season of life now, it's fun to watch. Sometimes I want to get in and really help, and other times it's nice to go and rest. So, <laughs> yeah. you learn a lot, you know, by watching. And um, it's different, you know. We do need communication, and even with listening, there's a difference of listening and actually hearing. Yeah. And, um, we have to concentrate yeah. and make sure we are listening yeah. and hearing. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think we all need wisdom as moms. Um, I mean, I only have a one-year-old. I haven't gotten to the teenage stage, but I know as a teenager, my mom needed a lot of wisdom to parent me and to show me the right ways um, and to bring me up, uh, you know, to love the Lord. And so that's a lot of wisdom. But I think the biggest thing for me um, is probably patience and communication. I talk to a one-year-old all day, so when <laughs> I get, you know, my husband to come home, it's the first adult I get to see all day, um, you know, when I'm not working. So that is a big thing, and patience as well. Um, you know, not having a one-year-old who can tell me exactly what he needs is difficult as well, and so um, having patience enough to understand him and, you know, meet his needs is, is something I need a lot of patience with. Yeah. Well, we have Carmen, Carmen watching. We have uh, Brenda, Christina, Dixie, the youngest one that we are uh, we had talked about. Oh, we already talked about you, Dixie. So now, when it's over, you got to rewind. That's right. So anyhow, it's the kind of I, I hear the word patience, and I think sometimes you know, growing up, I hear you know, my patience is wearing out. My patience is getting thin, getting thin, and so um, patience is something that. Um, that we're challenged with from time to time. So Ephesians says, put on patience. So how do you put on patience when your children and your household is in chaos? We get this moment. I mean, not in a bad way. I mean, you know, it's just busy. Yeah. I'm just saying just busy. You know, just things are happening and everything. And um, and, and especially with the coronavirus, I mean, I, I think, you know, when, when people are close together, your patience wear out. 
You know, and I think that's not just with moms. I think that came up as the number one repeatedly. That answer came up in this survey that, man, I need to pump up on my patients. My patience is running thin. Well, I think all of us kind of struggle with that at work or in different places. But when we have it, when we're close together in a confinement, even even our families, you know, you know, I need some me time, you know. So how do you find, how, how have you discovered about to get your patience? I mean, how do you put on patience? Well, I remember when you and I were very first married, it was just a couple weeks and the girls were so little. And uh, so, what, they were like 12, 10, and yeah. 7, I think. And so they were small and they were running around making chaos and I came out screaming. Russ comes out of his office, we are barely married two weeks, and he takes his glasses and he goes, I need you to figure out a different way to handle your kids. I can't deal with the yelling. <laughs> Puts his glasses back on and walks back into his office. So what you taught me, because your kids were grown, you had already raised your kids, and I think that that helped me as a mom uh, to learn don't major on the minors. How many times did you tell me, don't major on the minors? Yeah, right. And that really helps with patience because you have to realize, pick your battles. Don't yeah. be patient with the things that, you know, right. it just doesn't, uh, some things just don't matter. Yeah. Uh, or an old saying, if, 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 is it a heaven or hell issue? Right. You know, or my yeah. pastor I served under is assets and liabilities. We have a conflict in the church. You know, you look at the assets and liabilities. If we deal with that now and hit it hard, is it gonna be uh, an asset to us? Or if we hit it, it's gonna cause bigger problems or we need yes. to back off and give it a break for a while. So assets and liabilities. You know? Right, and as a mom, you yeah. just have to really figure out how can you enjoy your kids? Yeah. You need to be able to enjoy your kids with because there's a lot of stuff going on. It's not, you know, you have to uh, figure out how to be a good wife, a good mom. Uh, we're working moms, and, uh, you know. Yeah, and, you know, and I think when you're in the middle of it, I see little Hudson running around. You guys are busy, yeah. you know, and they demand a lot of time. And, um, you know, and um, we know why uh, people under 20s have children. They got a lot more energy, you know. <laughs> and, and, and then we think back, we think back on that. And um, we just realized that we need to, um, you know, in the middle of all, and now I look at that and I said, man, I can't remember. I'm trying to think when my, our kids were little. Yeah. I mean, it goes by so stinking quick. So fast. That, you know, I'm sure we all had our moments of being impatient back in the day. Yeah. But, you know, it just goes by so quick. So being in the moment, I think how to up, up take our patience is realize, you know, somehow we can calm it down and say, okay, you know, I need to enjoy this because he's not going to be this little this this long, you know. Yeah. And um, and be part of that. You and know. Sometimes you just have to walk away. Yeah. You have right. to to breathe. You have to go outside and look at the flowers, even for five minutes. Yeah. And then walk away. Right now, it's even different because all of the children are home for school. You're having to teach school. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just different. And sometimes you just have to say, okay. I need a five minute break. Yeah. And then you can walk back in with a clear mind mm -hmm. and start again. Yeah, it's almost like yeah. a, it's a recharge. Yes. Reminds me of that old uh, Miss Pac Band. You know, everybody's chasing you, it's busy, dee 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 dee, and all of a sudden he hits that energy, you know, and all of a sudden, boom, you yeah. know, and gets recharged. And it's almost like having those little recharge moments. Right. And, you know, and even as, as husbands and dads, you know, you might have to have a cue there where it says, you know, honey, I need to hit the recharge button for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm getting, you know, well, and there's I, like a little cue, yeah. like I need to take a little downtime and divert for five, 10, 15 minutes, you know, yeah. and then come back. I think, and I don't know about what you guys think, but I think husbands and dads have a lot more recharge time than moms. <laughs> and husbands what? and, yeah. <laughs> Come on, dads, let me hear you. Husbands and dads need to help the moms, and, and sometimes us as grandmas, because I'm a Gigi now. So if I take Hudson or David or Carter or, or Remy or Noah or yeah. Asa or Ivy, yeah. did I eat them all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if I take, say, hey, let me have them for five minutes. Uh, 
while while you take a shower, you know, because otherwise it, it's just crazy. So I think as uh, grandparents and as dads and husbands, you can say, hey, let me take care. You do this. You mm -hmm. say, let me take care of the dishes. That's mm -hmm. not really. Uh, we're not used to that in our family. Mm -hmm. I love my dad, but he doesn't do dishes. Right? <laughs> he does a lot of things, but he does not do dishes. Yeah. But sometimes you say, hey, let me do the dishes, yeah. you know, and that takes five minutes right. from me. And, yeah. and being that we came into, uh, you know, uh, a blended family, and I had already uh, raised uh, two already, and they were out, you know, and then we got, you know, Allie and Savannah and little Dixie, and when I came in, they were, all of you were little. Yeah. And so now I'm coming in with a different perspective now, you know, here, here, here's, round, here's Act 2, coming in, being, being dad and be a parent, you know, and uh, so the kitchen thing to me, what was was good bless you thanks and um, to me it was a way of going in and cooking because we started a preschool we were very both busy yeah and so to me I just jumped in and, and did that and a lot of yeah. times I would tell the girls now girls um, uh, don't what I just I, She'd say, uh, your mom's in your bedroom, give her five minutes, yeah, just that's walk right. away. Exactly. <laughs> you go in your room, that's she'll right. go in her room, just walk away, right. just don't bother yeah. her. Yeah, that's right. And sometimes when we were growing up, I remember my dad would take us for a ride or take right. us to the ballpark yeah. or things like that to help my mom. Right. Yeah. Well, one of the scriptures that stuck out with me about patience is remember God understand, understands. And in Psalms 30, 78, I don't know, it just hit me this week just listening, looking at that. Though he did all of this for them, they continued to test his patience. Mm -hmm. Woo! God, patience. And you think about God, it's like, mm -hmm. really? God's patience was tested? So to me, as a mom, I would look at that, you know, and even as, a, as an individual, realize that God was up at his wits end with the Jewish people in the Old Testament. They tested his patience. And because we're, we're created in the image of God, God put these emotions in us. Because we see in the Bible, God got angry. God yeah. gets jealous. God, you know, what was excited. You know, all these emotions we have is because God, our creator, put these emotions in us. And well, so, it's interesting because it says, though he did all of this for them, yeah. they continued to test his patience. If we look at him as our heavenly father... As a parent, we're all parents, mothers and dad, though he did, sometimes you think, are you kidding me? I just spent how many hours on this birthday party and you're going to act like a stinking teenager right now? We feel like that sometimes. And I'm sure that, you know, after you did all of this mm -hmm. for them, yeah. they continue to test his patience. That's hard as a mom yeah. sometimes because you put a lot in, and sometimes as children, we don't realize how much parents put into into things. I remember one time, uh, it was my 16th birthday party, and it was a huge party, and mom had planned and planned and planned and planned and planned, and I was worried about what I was gonna wear because I was 16. And I remember testing her patience that day, but she, we, we settled on an outfit, but she had, now that I look back and read this verse, yeah. sorry mom. <laughs> Donna, thank you for coming on. Also, Christine. And she says, as a little girl, I really needed my dad to take a moment to focus on talking to me. And it meant so much that I was important to deserve his full attention, even just for a few minutes. Yep. Very good. Mm -hmm. So how to bump up the patient piece, you know, kind of get a, a different look at that when your patience is at wit's end. To me, it'd be like, okay, God, you understand how I felt. Because we think God's way up there and he, you know, He's not bothered. He's not affected no. how we are. But we see in the scripture, they continue to test his patience. So when we're at that wit's end, we know that God uh, was, has been there. Mm -hmm. And he's probably still there because he looks at us. And he's going, <laughs> oh, are you serious? Are you, what are you doing down there? You How know, you so I'm just saying that God understands our frustrations and that yeah. should add a kind of a, a, a positive thing to our impatience and knowing that God, our father, yeah, I get it. And then another thing about patience is in James 1 on your outline there, where it says a third thing, patience is used in our lives to grow us, to help us grow in God. And it says in James 1, when the way is rough, your patience has a chance to grow. So let it grow. Don't try to squirm out of your problems. But when your patience is finally in full bloom, then you will be ready for anything strong in character 
full and complete. And so it's almost a different twist when all of a sudden you're at your wits end, you're getting ready to, you know, realize, you know what? I'm growing character here. If I handle this right and calm myself down and get my thoughts, you know, just kind of, you know, my character has a chance to grow and develop. Sometimes now, that's a, uh, the and, difference between a mother and a grandmother. Yeah. And a great grandmother. Yeah. I think that the patience level just goes up and up and up. Well, it, it, it kind of, in, in every problem, it says, it says, don't try to squirm out of your problems. So, you know, every problem gives us an opportunity to grow our character. Yeah. To grow our, um, to grow our maturity level. Because, you know, I remember looking at, you know, as a young pastor, this was happening and all the senior seasoned pastors, they'd sit down, not even moved. They go, well, listen, this is what's going to happen. And calm as can be. You do that to me. And, you know, and it's the difference, <laughs> it's the difference between living life and you realize, you know what, I've been down that road and I understand, you know, and yeah, I acted just like you did, you know, and, you know, but I've learned some things. And so that's what I'm saying, your patience, you allow that as a growth process. I mean, I'm just saying, how can, how can we uh, embrace patience in troubles? I think if we realize, okay, I'm in school right now. I'm, this is a test, and I need to let it develop in my life, you know. I'm just saying that could be, add a different dimension to, to it. So. Yeah, and I think the difference between, um, you know, the few years when you had first gotten married in my teenage years showed a lot of growth in your patience as well because um, just talking about how, you know, she came in screaming and yelling and all this stuff, and then a few years later, um, I was not good in high school, and I had done some bad things, and my mom had found out, and instead of coming in the moment and coming in my room and screaming at me and just giving it to me, I had come home and she was sitting on the front porch in one of the lawn chairs and she just stared at me and I, she sat there, did not even flip, I don't even think she blinked. She <laughs> waited there until I had said something and I think we sat there on, in those two chairs for like 30 minutes without saying anything because she had enough patience to just sit there and like let my heart eat itself out and my stomach eat, my, oh it was horrible, but she had enough patience in that moment to, instead of screaming at me taking it in and coming at it at a different way where the communication was easier and it didn't ruin our friendship at the time or our relationship as mother and daughter. Right. Becky says, as a mother, you start growing your, your precious through the love of Jesus. So, so that's right. I think as we grow in Christ and we, and we learn that, I was so blessed to be in a Christian home and to have a mom, a God-fearing woman that prayed for me and guided me. And listen, I, I had those moments too, Allie. I, I was not an easy teenager. So, um, you know, right, Mom? That's right. <laughs> so, but you're right with the patience. And when that's right, Becky, when we have the love of God and the love of Jesus in our hearts, it's easier as moms and grandmas to be a little bit more patient. And you grow. You grow and you learn. You go, okay, listen to Russ. Pick your battles. Listen to my mom. Pray through it. Yeah, and we want to say hello to Jackie. Hello to Becky. They've joined us today. Yeah. Trish. God bless you for coming on. Um, in the area of moms need appreciation, um, uh, well, before I say that, um, uh, you know, there, not everybody's experiences with their mother is not good. Right. You know, and, and I think we need to kind of hit on that a little bit. Yeah. Because there are some moms, there are some situations where um, mothers um, were not in their life. Yeah. They may, maybe they, they, they abandoned them. You know, or maybe they were in their life and, they, and it just was a tough, you know, negative uh, yeah, situation. Exactly. Yeah. And and people have it's, it has a, it wasn't a good time when they think back in their childhood. So I know there's people like that out there, yeah. you know, and they're probably thinking, you know, man, I wish I had a home life like that, but yeah. my home life wasn't like that. Yeah, right. So let's kind of talk, just kind of hit that a little bit. You well, know? I think what? that it's our responsibility. We have a lot of kids coming in and out of our house, and we did when uh, I was a child too. And uh, I think it's our responsibility as Christians, as Christian mothers, to, to take those other kids in and to help, help um, cook with them. And if, if I've had some of, some of your friends say, oh, I don't, 
I don't get to cook at home. And so, well, then if I hear that, then we're getting out the eggs and we're getting out the flour and we're trying to make experiences to let, let children know, show the love of Jesus, not only to our own children, but to other children as well. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty about church. The church yeah. is supposed to be, you know, you see the church is a family. It's, you know, we, or, you know, Paul says brothers and sisters. So there's this family connection. And although biologically we're not connected, however, as we come together throughout the week in our church, we, we as those of us see teenagers or see young moms or see people, maybe they didn't have a good mother relationship or even a father relationship. This is where we as men in the church for sons, and even as men, and I see uh, girls, you know, they don't have a, uh, a maybe a good father image. This is where we in the church can can take up the slack yeah. yes. and be the in, and be the influence there and be the role model for them, and and let their experience when they come into your presence or when they come into the church world, it's positive experience. Yeah. In other words, they can think back and say, you know what, I got my emotional needs met at church mm -hmm. because I had a few moms yes. that that came alongside of me. I didn't understand it then, but looking back now, um, maybe I didn't have a good role model at home, but when I came to church, I had one, two, or three ladies that took an interest in me. Right. You know? And it's I a think that's a way. Mom. Spiritual mothers, yeah. Yeah. And so that can take up the slack a little bit, you know? And I even thought about this, you know, you know, what would happen if, uh, you know, you didn't have a good relationship or your mother abandoned you for whatever reason and gave you up for adoption? Yeah. How can I appreciate her? Well, thank God that she gave birth to you. Yeah. At least I got a chance yes. to get into life. Yeah. Now, what I do with that is up to me, right. but at least she gave me a running chance. <laughs> and you never know what that mom was going through at that time. Right. Exactly. And you don't know the whole story. Right. Yeah. And you have to live under grace. You know? Yeah. And that mom's just as important as any other mom. Right. Exactly. And we just yeah. have to love them back into the kingdom. Yeah. 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 And be a positive influence. So that's those of you that are that maybe don't have that experience. I know sometimes that's kind of a something that bugs you. you yeah. Know, in, in the back of your mind. So. Okay. But anyhow. Um, let me ask you this: um, What is um, what is the greatest challenge as a parent today, as a mom? What's your greatest challenge? I mean, I think the challenges. I look back in the the fifties, the thirties, the forties, the fifties, the sixties. We see the challenges culturally. To me, I think that's a big challenge. Today. Well, I think the challenge is different between all yeah. three of us. Yeah. We're at different stages in life. The challenge for me as a parent right now, I we're we're from our kids range from 18 all the way to 30 yeah and and the difference now is um, between now it's turned to guiding yeah you know that you just have you you guide them and you think man I've, I've done the best I can hopefully they make good decisions and we pray for them yeah. and pray over them and and help help guide them and uh, I really try to turn them to the word and my challenge as a parent is when when they don't follow the word of God and I think are you kidding me are you kidding me and it stresses me out because you do, you know you don't want your children to hurt and we have enough life or we know consequences so we you know that's the biggest challenge of me is to watch them make the mistakes and say okay God you promised we gave these kids to you a long time ago yeah. and you promised that you know and so and we've got five great fantastic yeah. kids but it's still stressful when they're when they're trying to make the decisions and trying to grow up. Right. What do you think, Mom? <laughs> well, I was going to say, in my seasoned life, as <laughs> Russ calls it, <laughs> I still try to be an example. Oh, yeah. Uh, an example for them to follow, an example. I try to plant seeds into their lives that will grow for eternity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. What's the greatest joy? Let's, let's get Allie's challenge. Okay, Allie, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Um, I, I think a big challenge that will be for me, you know, when Hudson's older, is, is social media. That's such a huge thing in, in our lives right now. And even as a mom, social media is tough for me because so many times I just want to sit on my phone and, you know, scroll through Facebook. But then I have to realize, oh, my child's 
you know, eating a Sharpie or, you know, something like that. And I have to take my focus off of social media and realize that I have a kid and I need to spend so much more time with him. And um, that's something I had struggled with. And so, um, you know, raising Hudson, it, that's going to be a huge thing for me because he's going to see social media and see the worldly things. And so to bring him up loving Christ and knowing Christ, that's our biggest prayer is that he will learn to love Christ and know him and follow for him. Sure. And so that's just a big battle that we're going to get to face. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Becky says, knowing when to talk and when to keep quiet. <laughs> that is very, that very is true. That is so that's true. true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's the biggest joy? Yeah. What's the biggest joy in motherhood? What's your biggest joy right now? My, my biggest joy is to watch the kids enjoy life. Yeah. And uh, when I see the kids enjoying their kids, yeah. uh, when we see uh, Tori and, uh, and David running on that uh, four-wheeler and, yeah. and just loving life, and uh, we get to see the smiles and everything, and then Allie and Elijah with Hudson, and then uh, Savannah when she catches the big fish, and Dixie when she finishes math. <laughs> there, there's a lot of things. I, I, I like it when, when they're happy, I'm happy. I think the biggest joy for me is watching your kids um, finally get it, and they're they're they're, they're cranking on all, on their cylinders, and you know, and the, and, and and they got a they're they're productive, and you know, they, they got they have a good perspective on, on life. They finally you know grabs you know grabbed it, and you know, and just watching them just enjoy life, making wise decisions. Yeah. You know, and, and just watching, you know, them just kind of live out, you know, doing yeah. what they're supposed to do and watching the results of that. Yeah. You know. so, uh, Trish Blau says, my biggest joy in life is seeing how my son loves the Lord and is great and being a great father and serves others in need. Yeah, very yeah. good. That's good. Welcome, Steve. Good to see you. He joined us. Okay. All righty. Well, anyhow, so... Um, What's the hardest choice you've ever made as a mother? The hardest choice. What's the hardest? Is there, is there anything that stands out? The hardest choice? No. Well, to me, it would be letting go. Yeah, letting go? Yes, yep. because a mother wants to make everything perfect. I don't care how old they are, how big they get, you still, you still want to yeah. be there. Yeah. And letting go is very hard. Yeah. But yeah. it's like you say when we give them to God when they're really young and little babies, we dedicate our all three when they were babies. And yeah. you just it says train them up. Yeah. And when you train them up, then you have to let them go and let yeah. let God. But God, that's that's one of the hardest things to do, especially when they're making decisions about things that you don't agree with. It it's like man because you want to you want to help make that decision or or take the car away or take the phone away and 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 now you can't we can't do that anymore they're too old you know so and there's some people agreeing with you on that one yeah reva says letting them go it, it is hard to, yeah. to to let them go yeah yeah one of the the hardest choices um for me as a mom is when the girls were little uh I was a single mom and I couldn't do it on my own. So mom and dad opened up their house, built triple bunk beds, and uh, whew, that was a houseful. That was a houseful, but it was a hard, but we had to make some decisions in order to be, for our life to be fruitful and to, and to go in the way that the Lord had planned. Anything else? Um, you know, one of the things on the survey is moms need validation. So how, how can we, you know, um, what does that look like for, for you, being validated? I mean, you know, it's different from everybody, you know, what, you know, it, you know uh, maybe spending more, I guess it depends on your love language. Whatever your, you know, the five love languages, I guess we need to understand each other's five love languages and understand what your top two, three love languages. And you can get that online. You can go to, uh, just type in, uh, um, um, love, love language, language test. Test, yeah, and they'll uh, and you can take that test and you can get the uh, you can get it pretty quick. But um, you know, when we, if we understand, like for Aunt Angelia, her love language is quality time and, and touch. 
we might need to, to retake that test to see. How, I think sometimes in seasons of life uh, it, it, uh, it can change. But if we understand each other's love languages. Because sometimes you just give up on those two, so yeah. you might as well try the others. That's right, exactly. <laughs> Like, like, like for me, you know, so anyhow, what's the validation? I mean, how, how can we, you know, how can you get that? I mean, what do you need to feel that? There's, you know, there's so much pressure put on you as, as moms and everything. How can we validate you? I mean, I mean, it's different for everybody, but just kind of talk about that a little bit, maybe, you know, because that was a thing that, that came up, you know, I need validation, you know? Uh, a few weeks ago, I had done a ton of laundry and my husband says he doesn't believe in dressers and that's what the hamper's for <laughs> you wash the dirty clothes and your clean clothes are in your hamper and you can just pull from there so I had folded all of his clothes and put them away and laid some on the bed for him for to sleep in that night and he had come in the room and he said I'm sorry about every bad thing I said about you today I'm so happy I have clean folded clothes and so <laughs> And me doing that out of like spite like you know your dressers are disgusting and messy but then him saying like you know I appreciate you doing this little thing for me that right. was annoying to you I really appreciate that because I don't do that and yeah. so um, yeah. just just being seen right. and you know being looked at like wow she's cleaned the house all day she's done all the laundry she's yeah. cooked you know yeah. I, I come home Nana makes a pot of tea for granddad and has a cup full of ice you know, as soon as he comes home when he was working every day. And so little things like that, like just being appreciated for the little things you do, even though you don't, right? you know, you don't have meaning behind it, you just do it, but just to be looked at and saying, wow, thank you for, yeah. you know, yeah. all you do. Yeah, that's right. And I think that that's different in, um, as you grow, as you grow as well, uh, validation says when Russ says hey I'm clearing the calendar and taking you fi fishing because I love you as a mom as a wife man that that's a great day yeah. Yeah. right when, yeah. so I think that that's what that's how you validate me and say you know what you're important enough to take time so I guess my love language is still quality time <laughs> <laughs> what about you mom well I like to walk on the beach yeah. okay you know I like to go for rides I, I just I like the little things. The little things mean more to me than any big thing will ever be. Yeah. Just the little things. Yeah. yeah. Turn the TV off and... When you're paying attention, like when you get attention. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Go for a walk. Welcome, Bobby. Good to see you. Appreciate you coming on. Here's another one, and, and to, we're wrapping this up. Moms need rest. And it's interesting, in this, in this survey, it was evidence that moms were dealing with two twin emotions exhaustion and guilt and in this survey it said exhaustion because they were doing too much they, they uh, it's exhausted because they were doing too much they were just overwhelmed but on the flip side of that guilt because they felt like they weren't doing enough right so you in this catch-22 you know and, and, and I'm reminded of Tori you know you know sometimes you know you know when she was given her kids uh, when she was uh, sending off to uh, preschool there she would sometimes feel like she was guilty because um, I should be spending time with my kids. Yeah. But yet, she just worked that night, you know, and the demands. And, uh, and I said, you know, just take a break. Yeah. Rest. Yeah. Don't get your mind. You're exhausted, but now you're feeling guilty for trying to take a break. Yeah. Right. You know, and I think we see that in a survey that moms deal with that, it seems like. That was a, something that kept coming up. And I think guilt is mainly from the enemy you know trying to attack you in in a lot of ways being a mom especially um and being a wife and that's just the biggest thing the enemy sees that oh i can you know i can sneak in and tell tori she's not a good enough mom for sending her kids to preschool you know you yeah. need to stay home and be a right. stay home mom there's a lot of moms that just don't they, they like to work they like to work and that is me you know that is my mom that is nana they like to work and so getting that guilt at the end of the day oh you know you didn't make a homemade dinner you ordered yeah. out or you know you got to go food stuff like that and i think that's the biggest way the enemy comes into our lives and our hearts is to make us feel like we're not good enough mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and um and the lord the lord says you are enough and you know when when you look at the the fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience um you can still have joy uh when when it's a to-go order yeah. you know 
And I'd rather have, Russ says this often, we'd rather have a peaceful house than uh, chaos. chaos. And so sometimes if we don't get rest, our house turns yeah. to chaos. And right. we've got to slow down and yeah. chill out. And boy, this coronavirus yeah. has helped us do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of chilling out. Well, you know what? We're still busy, though. And we've still got things to do, but... Um, you know, it, and it causes us, you know, we don't go out to eat and, you know, yeah. like, you know, just, you know, it's more downtime than, than what we typically Tr have. Trish says naps are good. <laughs> In Italy, they do it every day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that's true. And let me just close it out with this. Uh, moms need faith. And I think yeah. we need to have that, that soul rest, that spiritual, because uh, you know, we can get restless, you know, things turning in your spirit and, um. Uh, don't know how to let go. Don't how to give. Not, don't know how to get the rest you need emotionally. Yeah. Uh, you know, of course, physically, but you know, emotionally, stressing out over adult kids at times. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that just robs you of that peace that that can come, and you almost got to guard your soul, guard your heart, mm -hmm. so that you don't get into. Uh, you keep going down that path of. Uh, of un uncertainty or a lack of hope or start internalizing and worrying and everything you get down you, you get down a, a path that can exhaust you, you yeah know? and you don't have that you don't have that uh, that soul rest so we need to back off and recharge and learn how to do that recharge our spirit you yeah. need your quiet time yeah you know uh, the, and the word says a wise woman builds her house yeah, yeah. And a wise mother oh. builds her home yeah yeah right well, in John 14, 1 says, Jesus says, don't be troubled. You trust in God, now trust in me. And like mom was saying, when we let go, man, it's hard. And, yeah. I, and I used that explanation the other day, that another word for the Holy Spirit is to hover. Yeah. And when we're being the helicopter moms trying to take care of the situation, and, and that's in every, in every stage, yeah. I think. That's right. Because it's hard to see adult kids make decisions, and you're like, oh, wait, if you would just do this, or if you would just do this, or I'm surprised you didn't do it this way. If we let the Holy Spirit do his job, yeah. then life is a lot more peaceful. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to close, and uh, Greg and Trish, uh, they're, they're, they've joined us. Part of the family. <laughs> um, Greg is uh, is one as uh, oldest son. Your brother. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and Trish there. Um, just to close it out in Philippians four, and this is probably they say this is the number one verse that is on Kindle, like the most verse that computers kind of register in the Bible that people select, and this is it. And, and Philippians four. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to the Lord, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, it will guard your hearts, and it will guard your minds in Christ Jesus. So that's the value of having that faith peace in our hearts. You know, you know, being able, and, and that's where your energy source is, where yeah. we can just go to God, when everything else is beyond our control, we can say, you know, God, you're bigger than this. I got, I got to just give it into your hands. And when you do that, something supernatural takes place. You know, God begins to start working behind the scenes. And you start seeing things beginning to get changed. You start seeing uh, uh, God answering and moving in little ways, mm -hmm. you know, f towards that. So when that's it says my word. In, in everything in everything by prayer and thanksgiving and sometimes we are so worried about the things we need we forget to thank him for the things that we have mm -hmm. so we just got to be really and and we just say uh when we pray for the land we i say thank you lord for the finances that are going to build that church that we have cat. a playful <laughs> we have a playful cat here <laughs> uh, the, i don't understand why ali was jumping <laughs> Finally got you. I'm yeah, glad she finally got you because it was tough. We're thankful for that cat that brings joy. And, and Trish, uh, she says, we all need time out to regroup, read God's word, and to give strength, to get strength and wisdom. And Kathy says, you all enjoy each other. So that's really nice too. Amen. So, hey, we just want you to know tomorrow we have prayer on the porch. And if you have a specific prayer request, that you have for your family, for your job, for your finances, for anything that you need in 
prayer and supplication. We're going to bring those up to the Lord tomorrow morning on Prayer on the Porch. My mom joins me when she's here in town, and Allie will probably join me tomorrow morning. Uh, prayer on the Porch, every prayer request is prayed over. And even if it's not prayed over over on the phone, it's prayed for individually. We look through the list, and we want you to send in your prayer request. So when you see that name, then you're welcome to comment here, too. And um, our cousin Linda says, enjoy the great word. Hi, Linda. So, and I know she's a praying woman too. So what you can do is when you see those prayer requests, you don't have to be on our porch to pray. Yeah. We would like you to pray for those too. People are reaching out and we want to make sure that all of those uh, requests are covered. And if you have a specific need in this time, let us know. That's what the church is for. This week, we're, uh, the church... Uh, is helping the YMCA. Yeah. They have a group of kids who are, um, they've had a grant that can help with the kids that are um, that are having to stay home for all the first responders. So the church is helping with the uh, with some supplies and things like that. Next week we're going to do different things, but you might have an individual need or you might have a neighbor that says, you know what, they could really use a Publix gift card. Our church is available for that. We have a benevolence fund that you guys are so faithful in giving. And we want to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our community. So if you know a need, uh, let us know so we can help. Amen. Any closing remarks? No. Nope. Anything from the moms? Well, we love you mothers. And uh, <clears throat> my mom is 80. And so she's still living. So I, I talk to her every weekend. So uh, it's good to have my mom around. So um, make sure that you bless or bless your wives, guys. And uh, if you have moms that are still around, make sure you show your appreciation to them. Yeah. And um, we thank you for being part of our church. Thank you for allowing us to serve you and the, and, the, and the pastor you. And God has blessed our church in the last 10 years. Um, we're, just, we're just enjoying what we're doing in yeah. the ministry mm -hmm. and enjoying the people. We do have, listen, remember a, a lady named Dee. D looks like she's going to be going home to be with the Lord here shortly. Um, and so we've had a couple people. Jerry Lips went yeah. on to be with the Lord uh, in a couple a few weeks ago. And now D uh, looks like they're moving her to hospice. And so I'm in very close contact with D. But, um, you know, it looks like she's walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Looks like her time is coming. Yeah. So today, let's pray for D. And uh, D is one of those people that popped in our church a year and a half ago. And um, she and she got reconnected with God, and we're able to walk with her through their, through these last moments here on earth. So just just pray for Dee, and that God would just uh, just continue to walk with her, and she, He does, and um, that we can be a blessing to her during this time. So God bless you. We love you. I don't know who's going to turn the camera all off. We get our daughter to do that, and please keep in touch with us, and call us if you need any help. God bless you. We love you.